everyone and welcome to Chet. My name's Natalie. I'm Sam, hi. It's great to see you. Uh, we hope you had an amazing Christmas and you've eaten lots of food. And what day is it? Is it 27? I who knows. Who knows? You know that like that state of being that happens between like Christmas and New Year's. Yes, You're just yes. eating leftovers. You have no idea what the actual day is anymore. Is there a calendar? Does it even exist, guys? I know. Like 2020. <laughs> <laughs> True. Well, we've got an amazing service plan for you today. Um, and just before we start with our first worship song, um, Angus is going to jump on the video and tell us a little bit about something called Beating the Bounds, which is happening on. The third. The th of which month? Of January. Of January. Of January. Third which, January, which guys. Year? 2021. Yeah. 21! There you go. Oh, it's going to be great. Here it is. Good morning and happy Christmas again. I hope you're well wherever you're tuning in from. It's great to be worshipping with you today. My name is Chris. I'm the vicar here at St Mary's Andover. And just before we hear from Angus, I'm keen to share a quick update following the government's latest announcement that this part of Hampshire has been placed into tier four restrictions following the recent increase in COVID-19 cases around the country. We've reviewed our Sunday in-person worship service pattern to make sure that what we're doing remains uh, as safe and responsible as possible in the light of these latest circumstances. And we've taken the difficult decision to move our in-person 1030 service back fully online. So as of the 3rd of January, that's next Sunday, the 10.30 service is an online only service. We're gonna to continue to worship in person in the morning at 8.30 and again in the evening at 6.30. And if you haven't tried one of those services before, uh, but you are able to worship in person at the moment and would like to join us, I'd love to invite you to either one of those services uh, to come and be among us. We'd love to worship God with you together and to share that time with you. Please do join us there if you can, but the 10.30 service is online only going forward. We've got a great programme lined up for you in January. Can't wait to share that material with you and look forward to seeing you there. If you are particularly challenged at the moment uh, by the latest news, please don't hesitate to let us get in touch. We're thinking of you. We're praying for you. God bless. Hey, everybody. I'm here to tell you about our amazing prayer walking initiative, Sunday the 3rd of January after the 10.30 service. We are going to be walking all over Andover in our households and bubbles in the tradition of beating the bounds. This amazing prayer tradition started hundreds of years ago where people would walk around the boundary of their parish and pray for its prosperity, for people in it to come to know Jesus. And that is what we are going to do. It's an amazing chance to lift up 2021 before the Lord and pray for his kingdom to come in Andover. It's going to be incredible. I'm here in our local park. We'll walk around our neighbourhood and as you do that, send us a photo, take a photo, let us know what you're praying for, tag us at St Mary's Andover on social media and we'll share out uh, amazing stories of where we are all around the town praying and joining together. We're about to go into worship so let me just pray one more, uh, more prayer as we start to sing. Father, we thank you that you are with us this morning. We thank you that you are good, you're faithful, you're strong, and that you have come at Christmas, and we celebrate that. Lord, we just want to worship you now, so send your spirit to be with us as we do that. In Jesus' name, amen. Shining down on me 
when the world's all as it should be, blessed be your name. And blessed be your name on the road marked with suffering. Though there's pain in the offering, blessed be your name. Every blessing you pour out, I'll turn back to praise. And when the darkness closes in, Lord, still I will say, Blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your glory. Lord, blessed be your name, you give and take away, you give and take away, my heart will choose to stay, Lord, blessed be your name, blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your name, blessed be the name. Father, we thank you that we can worship you. We thank you for all that you have done, all that you are doing, and all that you will do. And we ask, Holy Spirit, would you come and speak to us now? Amen. Amen. Guys, we are in Luke chapter 2, verses 15 to 21. Um, and I just want to give a little bit of context before we read this passage. Now, we are actually um, still in the Nativity story a bit here, which might surprise you. But we're just going to spend the next couple of weeks... Um, looking at the shepherds and the kings. Uh, now, what has happened before this is we know, we know the story pretty well. Mary and Joseph, they've um, gone to Bethlehem. Um, Mary is pregnant, an angel has appeared to her, all of that stuff. They've gone to Bethlehem for this census. And whilst they're in Bethlehem, the shepherds um, have been uh, watching their kind of flocks, um, you know, the songs, and an angel has appeared to them and told them that Jesus, this baby, is to be born in a manger, in the kind of equivalent of a feeding trough. And then this whole kind of crowd of angels has come and sung to them. Uh, and that is where we are uh, when we arrive at our passage. Luke chapter 2, verses 15 to 21. Let us read it. It says this. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in a manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at the, what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen which were just as they had been told. On the eighth day, when it was time to circumcise the child, he was named Jesus, the name the angel had given him before he was conceived. What a great passage. Um, there is so much going on there, and there is so much to me. This passage really feels like a lot of joy. It feels like a lot of goodness that is going on there. I really want to quickly want to talk to you about three things. I want to talk about obedience, joy, and about treasure. Um, so let's start with obedience. Now, when we look at the nativity story, I don't know if obedience is the first word that comes to your mind. Uh, it's probably not the first word that comes to mind, but when I was reading through this passage, I was reminded again of the obedience of the shepherds. And to be honest, I was reminded again of the obedience of Mary. 
And the reason I was reminded of that is because if you just, like, I know we've all heard this story lots and lots of times, I'm sure we've all heard it preached lots of times, but if you put yourself in the shoes of these people, they had angels that just turned up and told Mary she was pregnant, um, told Joseph, oh, don't worry, it's all okay, told the shepherds out of the blue to go in search of this baby, um, and then they, they all just do it. And it's kind of amazing to me that these people, um, yes, of course, there is some kind of questioning that happens from Joseph's point of view, but it amazes me that these people, they place their trust in God, they have placed their identity in God, they have placed themselves in God, and they are willing to go on the journey. Now, the question I kind of want to ask when it comes to obedience is, are we willing to go on an adventure with God? Another way to put that is, what is God calling you to right now? What has God been calling you to for a while? And the reason I ask it like that, and the reason I ask that question about the adventure, is because sometimes when we think of obedience, we can kind of, I don't know, our heads might go straight to like being a teenager in secondary school and like doing what the teacher tells us or getting our homework done, or maybe it goes to like a boss telling us to do something or like a to-do list that needs to be done or whatever, I don't know. Um, it, to me, obedience doesn't carry the kind of greatest weight of, of joy that there's ever been. But here's the thing. There is joy in obedience. There is joy to be found in this. Because God doesn't call the shepherds to go and kind of finish an essay on something or to go and swear an Excel spreadsheet or do the washing or whatever it is. God calls them to go and discover God in flesh and blood. He, go, he calls them to go and discover the Messiah, this king that they had been waiting for for many, many years. That is the calling that God gives them. And in being obedient to him, they end up going on an amazing adventure. And so I guess I just want to encourage you that whilst being obedient to God doesn't always just mean life is just easy and fun and we're all in a Disney movie, it does mean, I reckon, that God has your best interest at heart. It means that God is calling you on a journey, and it is a journey which involves joy. It is a journey which, yes, might be difficult, but it involves hope. It is a journey where he is with you. And I, I really think the best word to use for it is it's an adventure. So we're not going to spend forever on this, but I do just want to ask you this morning, what is God calling you to? And how are you going to take a step into that? this year. So the first thing is obedience. Are you willing to go on an adventure? The second thing I want to talk about is joy. Now I don't know if you have ever seen a TV show called Kim's Convenience, but guys, it will change your life. Uh, it became a bit of a popular TV show during the lockdown, I think. Now I had watched it um, a couple years before, and I remember when I watched it, um, wanting to kind of uh, almost hoard it slightly to myself. Um, and I spoke to a few people and was like, you'd really like this, but I remember kind of thinking to myself, um, I'm going to kind of just enjoy this on my own a little bit. Um, and I don't know, and then, then people discovered it this year, um, and they just found loads of joy in it. They just found so much excitement, they found so much kind of goodness. And I think the reason is, because that show, is, it's a comedy, it's about someone who owns a convenience store, uh, a family who owns a convenience store in Canada. And I have to just say, that show is one of those shows where there is so much joy. There is just kind of, it just is just a show that you walk away from smiling. You don't walk away thinking, oh no, who murdered who, or like, what is going on in this weird political intrigue. You just go away thinking that was fun, that was good, there was joy there. And I don't know how you kind of find this passage today with the shepherds, but what I feel like is that there is so much joy going on in that passage. And I think the reason is, firstly, um, these shepherds, they are younger, so they're not kind of, they're closer towards 10 than they are to 20. Um, and so I think that makes a massive difference. But the other reason I think is because they have encountered Jesus. They have encountered this pure goodness, this pure joy, and they have walked away and they just can't help but share it. They just can't help but share the wonder of this thing. And really, you hear that, I think, from the angels as well. They just can't help but share the joy and the excitement of it all. 
And so often when I meet people who have been on Alpha or have recently become a Christian or have just recently encountered God in a new way, they are super excited to invite other people to it, to kind of tell other people about God because they have encountered joy, they have encountered hope, they have found um, just goodness, I think. But sometimes I think it can be a little bit like me with Kim's Convenience. Sometimes after we've kind of been on the journey for a little while, we've known God for a little bit, maybe we kind of um, got went straight from the kind of baptism font when we were a baby onto the pew and have kind of been um, sitting there for a while now and we've been around this thing for all of our lives or maybe we've just been here for a long a long few years um, sometimes when we do that we can find ourselves kind of hoarding the joy we can find ourselves saying like me with Kim's convenience I don't want anyone else to know about it I don't want anyone else to see this good thing let me say this to you there is so much joy that is found when you share it with others. Um, this April, when Kim's Convenience, a load of people discovered it during lockdown, um, I found so much joy in talking to other people about the characters. I found so much joy in laughing with other people about the kind of situations um, in the comedy. And I just do think that when we share our joy, we kind of experience it in a new and more full way. Now maybe you are sat there thinking to yourself, this year has been pretty difficult. Uh, this year has not been much fun. There has not been much joy. It has felt pretty lonely. And the last few days have felt like one of the, some of the most lonely of the whole thing. I do want to just say to you, I am not saying that we just have to have a smile on our face all the time. And you know what? I agree. It has been really hard. I found um, last week when Boris made his announcement about Christmas just super difficult. I found myself getting a bit emotional, to be honest. This has not been an easy year. But I do think that the adventure God is calling us to is an adventure to discover a joy which is much deeper than just kind of a smile on our face. It is a joy which we are able to engage with even in the difficult moments. And I just really briefly want to suggest some ways which we might find that joy. The first is we might invite others to experience it. One great way to do that is with Alpha. The second is that we might want to get in contact with someone, with a friend, and just text them and encourage them, or maybe just chat to them. The other day someone gave me a call um, out of the blue and it was just good. It was just good to chat. Um, and the third is that we might want to cultivate thankfulness in our lives. And the way that I wonder we might want to do that is just in the morning, we might like to just write three things that we are thankful for that day and just spend some time, even if it's just two minutes with God, saying thank you. There's just three ways which we might even begin to kind of um, thread joy through our lives and to begin to, to, to make deep roots of joy, so that even in the times where it is difficult, we are able to experience God's joy. So, obedience, joy, and then the last thing I want to talk to you about is treasure. Um, and the question I want to ask is, where is your treasure? Now, I think we probably all noticed in the passage, this moment, this kind of um, verse that, that always feels like a, a kind of significant moment for me, uh, where it says this in verse 19. But Mary treasured up all the things and pondered them in her heart. It's a really simple verse to me, but it kind of, it feels like a moment of quiet in the busyness of the whole story. You know what I mean? There is so much going on in the Nativity story. There's shepherds, there's angels, there's kings, there's Herod, there's the whole lot. Um, and then it feels like occasionally you just get these moments where uh, everything kind of comes into focus or there's a moment of quiet. And you can feel the human moment in the story. It feels like that is where we are uh, in verse 19. Mary treasured all these things and pondered them in her heart. And I suppose my question to you is, where is your treasure? It is really easy this time of year to put our treasure in family, in the bank, to put it in um, food, to put it in uh, you know, fitness, to put it wherever it is. 
It is really easy to find our value, to invest our value in other things. Maybe the thing that we had been investing our value in without really realising it until this year is stability. Maybe we had invested it in the assumption that everything was just always going to be the way it is. And I think that, you know, this time of year is a time where we often kind of see the different places we invest our treasures in um, come all into one space. But I suppose um, the call of God is to invest our treasure in Him, is to address, invest our value in Him, is to invest our identity in Him. And what we see in this passage is Mary, I think, just taking a moment to treasure these moments up, to bring them together, and to begin, it almost feels like she's beginning to put it together a little bit and say, this thing actually might be real. Um, and so I suppose the, the challenge that I have here is um, to just take some time to put our treasure in gold. Because right now, particularly if, like me, it has been difficult this month, and it has been a, a Christmas with a lot of emotion in it, then sometimes it is good to remember that God is holding us, that God is with us, even in the instability, even, in the place, even when the places where we store the rest of our treasure can sometimes feel uncertain. And here is my suggestion and my call. I just do believe that this passage is calling us to reinvest our treasure in God again. And um, there are lots of ways that we might do that. Um, but one way uh, is that we might just take some time at the end of our days and just take some time to invite God uh, to be with us and to just go over the day with God. And we might remember the things that have been good in that day and say thank you to God. You might call those the things of treasure. And it's a kind of way of seeing where God has been at work and where he has been doing things. Gathering them together and pondering on them with God and saying thank you for what you've done. There might be moments where it feels like we have been far from God. Where we have sinned, where we have done wrong. And we want to say sorry for those things. Um, and then there are those moments where at the end we might just look forward to the future and say to tomorrow and ask God to be with us um, as we kind of uh, go on the journey the next day and as we encounter others the next day. So we just that's just one way that we can at the end of each day um, try and begin to kind of collect that treasure up. Um, and it might be a way that we begin to cultivate and reinvest our value. Um, the other thing that I want to suggest um, and I think that um, this kind of links back into the thankfulness idea that we spoke about earlier. It's just maybe at the end of the week. Um, maybe if you've got a family, you might do this um, around a, a meal table. Maybe just take some time to ask people around the table what they are thankful for, what has been good um, for them. Uh, but it might be if you live alone that you might just at the end of the week want to write down five things where you have seen God at work in your life. And here is my last suggestion of how we remember um, and invest our treasure in God. I just think that we need to remember the promises of God. We rem need to remember all that God has given us already, all the treasure we have received from him. Now that might be the big promises of God, of forgiveness, of love, of hope, uh, of his goodness, or it might be the things that are really specific to you. But here is my promise to you. That it is only as we begin to take our treasure out from the other things that we place around us and that we invest in. And as we take our value out of there and we put it into God, that we really are able to find some sense of solid ground. That we really are able to find our feet landing well and not feel like we're kind of floating around in this world as different things come and go. And sometimes, yeah, it does still feel like we're floating around. But we are able to remember the times in the past that God has been holding us. Think about the stories that Mary can tell after this moment. She's got shepherds, she's got arguments, she's got babies, she's got the whole thing. And so I just want to say, as we come to the end of this kind of uh, talk, these three things that I think we pick up from this passage. Obedience, are we willing to go on an adventure with God? 
joy are we willing to live in and share joy this week and third is treasure where are we putting our treasure and here i just want to remind you again of this story of christmas god is with us he has experienced our pain he's experienced what it is like to have job insecurity he has experienced what it is like um, to live uh, wondering where the next kind of meal is coming from and he hasn't just gone off and left us to it because he said, I'm done with that one. He is with us today. Even in our loneliness, even in our pain, even in our hopelessness at times, God is holding us in all of that. So we pray? Let's just take a moment and invite Holy Spirit to come and speak to us. Come Holy Spirit. Maybe as Holy Spirit is speaking to you, you, or as you've been listening, you've been really struck by this idea of obedience. And you've felt a real call uh, to go on this adventure with God. And you've really felt called into 2021. If that is you, we just say thank you, Holy Spirit. We just ask for more of that, Lord. And we ask for courage. We ask for vision. We ask for discernment. And we pray for those who are finding, feeling like they don't know where to go. They don't know what you are calling them to do. They're asking, they're asking where, Lord? And we pray, Lord, again, for a sense of your holding and a sense of your discernment and of your guidance. Come, Holy Spirit. Maybe, uh, as we were talking, you've been struck by this idea of joy. And maybe you have felt like you have been full of joy uh, over the last few days. Maybe Christmas has just gone really well. You've um, had a great time. Maybe it's been quieter or maybe you've spoken um, to your uh, family or your friends that you had planned to. And if that's the case, again, we say thank you, Lord. Thank you for all that you have been doing. Thank you for the joy that you bring. Thank you for the joy of Christmas. But maybe you are sat and you are feeling like this has been one of the hardest Christmases of your life. Or this has been one of the most difficult years uh, of your life. And if that is you, then I hear what you are saying. And we just want to say, Lord, would you be with us? Would you give us your comfort? Would you give us your peace? Would you remind us of your hope? And Lord, would you begin to light the fire of joy in our hearts again? Maybe you were really struck by this idea of treasure. Uh, maybe you um, are wanting to reinvest your treasure uh, in God. And so we pray, Holy Spirit, would you remind us of all your goodness? Would you remind us of all your promises? Would you remind us of all the things that you have done, you are doing and you will do? And would you help us to put our value in you, to put our treasure in you and to root that deep within us? Amen. Well, we're going to continue in prayer now. I know you've just been doing a lot of talking, Sam, but would you like to start praying? Sure, I mean, sure. Let's pray. Father, we pray for those in our town, we pray for those in our lives, we pray for those in our country, Lord, who are struggling at the moment. God, it has been a hard year. We pray for those who are alone over these last few days, but we also pray for those who've been alone over the last year, Lord, those who've been lonely over the lockdowns and restrictions and all the different things, God. We pray for those who are unwell, whether it's COVID or something else, Lord. And we pray for those who are facing um, job insecurity, God, or maybe who have recently become unemployed. Father, we just want to lift these people up to you. Lord, we know that Christmas is this time where we remember that you have come to earth, that you are with us. God, we know that you knew what it was like to live with all the pressures and strains and difficulties of life, as well as all the joys. And so we ask, would you draw close to these people? Would you bring your comfort, Lord? 
Would you bring your home? Would you bring your peace? And would you bring your love? Lord, amidst everything that's happened this year and especially over the last couple of weeks, we also just want to give you thanks. We also just want to say thank you for all the good things you've still given us in the middle of all of this. Lord, we just thank you that although we are separated um, so much over this, this year, but especially over Christmas as well, Lord, that you've given us means of technology that's allowed us to stay connected. Lord, that you've given us joy and hope in the middle of all of this. Um, Lord, we just, we just bring all of these things to you, Lord, and we also just take the time to, even now, just think about a couple of things that we're just thankful for. Lord, we thank you for the ways that we've been able to love our communities, Thank you for the way that we've been able to help each other, that we've seen the best in, in humanity in this year. Um, Lord, and as we go into this new year, Lord, we just it come expecting that you have so many good things for us in the year 2021. And we just say thank you. Amen. Father, we want to pray for the current political uncertainty. Um, Lord, for all that is going on uh, with Brexit, we lift that up to you, Lord, but we also lift up the other uncertainties that are going on around the restrictions, around um, all the other things that are happening at the moment, Lord. And we just ask, Father, would you um, give wisdom to those who are our leaders? Would you give a courage? Would you give discernment, Lord? And would you um, help them, Lord, as they work together uh, to move us forward and to lead us? And we just ask, Holy Spirit, that you would remind us that you are the God who is holding us, even in the uncertainty, that you are with us in that too. Amen. Amen. Well, we're going to have our final song now. Uh, but as the final song finishes, we're just going to actually leave some space at the end with a bit of worship music for you to continue praying, giving some thought, maybe you want to write down some things that come to mind, maybe you just want to sit in, in the stillness for a little bit, because we know that Christmas Christmas is, is quite crazy at times, it is, it, it, is. Is, it is, as I'm sure it was in Bethlehem 2,000 years ago, uh, but we think that there's also something really beautiful about the Christmas story, and about coming back to the stable, coming back to the miracle that is the birth of Jesus, and everything that that was the catalyst for, all the change that came as a result of this little baby that was given to us by God because he loved us that much. So we just encourage you amongst all of the things that we prayed for that you might want to continue praying about, that you also just take a moment to think about that picture, think about that moment in the stable and just, just spend some time enjoying Christmas because it is technically still Christmas, isn't it? It is, it is indeed. Give us, give us a Twelve days and all that lot. That's it. So actually it's, it's still Christmas. We don't have the Christmas tree, but it's still Christmas. So uh, that's just what's going to happen. Um, it's been amazing having you. Um, Sam, why don't you pray us out? Yeah, let's pray. Father, we thank you that we have been able to gather in this way this morning. We thank you that you are with us. We thank you that you are on the move in this town, that you are on the move in this community, that you are on the move in our lives. And we ask, Holy Spirit, as we go into our week, Lord, whatever it looks like, would you remind us of your blessing? Would you remind us of your hope and of your love? Amen. Amen. All right. We're going to have our final worship song now, so we'll see you soon. Bye, guys. Bye.
Thank you.